Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Harold, for that introduction. And thank you as well to uh, General Secretary Miller and all of the leadership up here with me this morning. Thank you to the International Association of Firefighters and all of the brave firefighters, paramedics, and retirees from across the country for your extraordinary dedication to keeping our citizens safe. I'd especially like to recognize the men and women here from New Hampshire for all that you do each and every day to keep our communities safer and make them stronger. And while he couldn't be here today, I'd like to acknowledge Professional Firefighters of New Hampshire President Dave Lang. He has been a great partner as we work together to ensure that Granite State's firefighters and paramedics have the support they need. The first and most important responsibility of government is to keep our people and communities safe. And as governor, I've been proud to always stand with our firefighters and paramedics as they work to keep Granite Staters safe. It's hard to put into words the incredible courage required to run into a burning building putting your own life on the line to save another's. And we will remain forever grateful to our courageous firefighters, our paramedics, and other public safety officials who have made selfless sacrifices in order to protect our communities. Even when you are not on the job, when you see those in need, you respond there too. And I'm particularly grateful and impressed by your efforts to give back to the communities where you work. From your decades-long support of the Muscular Dystrophy Association to your extraordinary work to ensure that all children have quality warm coats to call their own, you truly never rest in your efforts to help others. So as you protect our families and communities every day, it is critical that elected leaders always have your back. As governor, I have worked closely with the professional firefighters of New Hampshire on a wide range of issues to ensure that the voices of firefighters and paramedics are heard and that you always have the support you need. And we've made important progress on many of these priorities together. Through fiscally responsible bipartisan budgets, we've made critical investments in school safety improvements resources for firefighters and safety officials, and other priorities to keep our communities safe. We've worked to ensure that information given during critical incident stress management and crisis intervention services is confidential, helping ensure that firefighters get the support they need and deserve. And we have fought to protect the secure retirement that our firefighters and paramedics have earned through their years of dedicated and brave public service. We've made important progress, and we're continuing to partner together to address some of our most critical challenges. In New Hampshire, as in many states, the biggest public health and safety challenge we face is the heroin and opioid epidemic. I am grateful for the firefighters and paramedics who are on the front lines of tackling this crisis in New Hampshire and across the country. Every day, too many of you see the horrible impact of this crisis in the communities you serve. Last year alone, more than 400 Granite Staters died from a drug overdose, with the majority of those deaths caused by fentanyl, heroin, or another opioid. And thousands more overdosed, their lives saved only by the quick action of public safety officials, medical providers, or family and friends. We all recognize the serious threat that substance abuse poses to our people and to our quality of life. And in New Hampshire, we have been working together to strengthen our efforts to combat the crisis. We must continue to do everything we can to support our firefighters and other safety officials as we work to reverse the tide of this deadly epidemic. 
Last fall, I called a special session of the New Hampshire legislature and laid out comprehensive legislation to further strengthen our state's response. And as a result of that special session, I recently signed bipartisan legislation to crack down on fentanyl, streamline access to treatment, and strengthen our prescription drug monitoring program. We've also worked with our firefighters and paramedics to expand the safe use of Narcan, which can help save the lives of those experiencing an overdose. While our work to increase the safe and effective use of Narcan has saved lives, we know that Narcan is not a cure, which is why we must provide additional resources for prevention, treatment, and recovery programs. I've pushed for additional funding for these programs, along with funds to expand drug courts, upgrade the technology for our prescription drug monitoring program, and improve prescriber training to help address the overprescribing of opioids that often leads to heroin. And I am extremely proud that on Thursday, our Republican-controlled legislature passed a reauthorization of our state's bipartisan Medicaid expansion plan, which has already expanded coverage to nearly 50,000 Granite Staters. This health care expansion is making a real difference for hardworking families. It's boosting our economy, and experts have said it's essential to increasing our treatment capacity. While I am pleased to see bipartisan acknowledgement of this problem from Washington on combating this crisis, we need to see that acknowledgement backed here by additional resources. And we need to see Congress finally stop trying to repeal Medicaid expansion. We will have to continue to fight every single day to stem the tide of this crisis. And together, that's exactly what we will do. In New Hampshire, we've made progress on these issues and more by working with Democrats, Republicans, and independents to get things done for hardworking families. And we are seeing that progress all across our state. Our unemployment rate is now 2.7%, tied for the lowest in the country. And for the third year in a row, we were ranked the best state in the union based on more than a dozen measures of our economy and quality of life. It is long past time for Washington to take the same approach to support hardworking families. But unfortunately, for too long, corporate special interests have rigged the system for themselves and against the middle class. As I travel across New Hampshire, I hear from people and businesses who tell me their frustration that Washington isn't standing up for their priorities. I share their frustration, and I believe we can do better. I'm running for Senate because Granite Staters deserve a senator and a Senate majority who will always put their interests first, who will fight to expand middle class opportunity, who will focus on bipartisan problem solving and promoting innovation and education to ensure that everyone is included in our economic success. We need a future where everyone has the opportunity to get ahead and stay ahead, where our middle class is growing and thriving, and where all parents can once again feel confident that their children will have a better future, where each generation is again better off than the last. In the Senate, I will fight to help build that future each and every day. I will work across party lines to expand opportunity for hardworking families. I will fight to end tax breaks for big oil and for outsourcers so that we can provide relief to middle class families. As I have as governor, I will fight to make college more affordable and reduce the burden of student loan debt. And I am committed to supporting the priorities on the federal level that you all need to do your jobs. I support restoring funding for important programs like the FIRE Act, 
and staffing for adequate fire and emergency response grants to help improve the effectiveness of fire department operations and protect the health and safety of firefighters. And I support reauthorizing them without a sunset provision. I believe that firefighters should have the right to collectively bargain, and I will keep fighting to ensure. I will keep fighting. I will keep fighting to ensure that the labor movement can continue contributing to the well-being of our people and helping to build a strong economy with a thriving middle class. I have made clear as governor that I would veto right to work for less legislation if it reached my desk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And as a United States Senator, I will continue to stand with all workers. I support the Federal Firefighters Fairness Act to ensure that firefighters can qualify for workers' compensation and disability retirement benefits. And I am opposed to misguided bills that seek to dismantle defined benefit pension plans that dedicated public servants depend on. No matter the issue, you can always count on me to take my bipartisan approach, my common sense, and my commitment to problem solving to the Senate to get results for hardworking families. As you all know, the stakes in this election could not be higher. Sometimes I feel like I say that every election, but let me repeat, the stakes in this election could not be higher. As we've seen with the obstruction of the President's Supreme Court nominee, Washington is broken. But unfortunately, Washington's dysfunction extends far beyond the issue of the Supreme Court. In Washington, we see a Senate majority that works to protect tax breaks for corporate special interests like big oil, while opposing critical protections for our workers. A Senate majority that pushes deep cuts in Pell Grants that would make college more expensive, while also voting against allowing young people to refinance their student loans. And a Senate majority that for too long played games with legislation to help the heroes who risked everything to save lives on September 11th. Quite simply, we see a Senate majority that doesn't stand with the priorities of hardworking Americans. I'm ready to change that, but I can't do it without your help. The support of New Hampshire's firefighters and paramedics has always been incredibly important to me, and I hope I can count on your support this year as well. Our race will be among the closest in the country. And the corporate special interests working against us know it. They've already spent millions on my opponent's behalf. But I stand here with all of you in saying that we cannot let them pull us backward. I'm going to continue to fight every day so that we can continue to move our economy ahead and include more people in our shared success. And with your support, I will be a senator who will always put hardworking families first, and I will lead like it. Thank you again for inviting me to speak with you today and for all that you do to keep our families and our communities safe. Thank you.